Hello everyone, it's Brittany of BZ Art, and today I'm going to show you how to make a penguin using my penguin pattern. You can buy this pattern on my website or from my Etsy. So just before we get started, I do have the usual warning that there are birds <laughs> in the craft room, and sometimes they can make some noise in the background. I've also got a dog who might come in and bother me, but hopefully it'll stay pretty peaceful for this video. Fingers crossed. Um... I also wanted to just put a little disclaimer that I tend not to answer YouTube comments. It's just not a website that I visit daily, so I tend to overlook them. So if you have any urgent questions, be sure to send me an email. Um, you can also use the contact form on my website. So we're going to get started here with the foot of the penguin. I've already done one. I'm going to do the other. I'm using a white thread for this. You can also use pink. So you just sew around the penguin foot. I should also mention, when I do small pieces like this, I tend to just forego the seam allowance and cut them out in a big square like this, just because it's a little bit easier for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And I'm going to turn it right side out. Everyone always asks what these are. These are hemostats. They're a medical equipment tool. And uh, they work really great for a lot of things in sewing. So I definitely recommend getting a pair if you sew plushies regularly. Alright, so I'm just going to loosely stuff the penguin's foot. You don't want to stuff it too much because we are going to be sewing through the top of it. So if it's too thick, your sewing machine might have a fit. Alright. So then what I'm going to do is if you want you can use an air soluble marking pen and mark this uh, but I'm just gonna sew it you want to do a line here and then another one next to it I'm holding this thread this will stop bird nesting underneath if you have an automatic cutter uh, and I do so Go ahead and sew the other one. And I'm going to trim my threads. After that, I'm going to go ahead and switch to a black thread, which you can use for pretty much the rest of the penguin. So once that's done, I'm going to move on to the wings. I've already done the opposite wing. Uh, and to do that, I do it a lot like the feet, where I'm just cutting out a big general shape around them. Just because the smaller pieces like this, I find that's easier. But it's okay if you want to use the seam allowance too. Whatever works for you. So you're just going to lay a white one and a black one together. And then sew around, leaving this top open. And turn it right side out. Alright, so then I'm going to get started on the body of the penguin. And to do that, I'm going to start with one side of it in black, and then the white side that matches up with it. And what you're going to do is you're going to clip the seam allowance all through these curved areas especially, because this is kind of a difficult sew if you don't. You 
scissors are a little bit squeaky. Alright, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin these together. So because these, these two curves here are so extreme, like I said, this can be pretty difficult to sew. So you're going to want to be very careful when you do this. This is probably the most difficult part of the pattern. So I'm just going to go very slowly, bit by bit, and line these edges up, and then pin them. And this is why the clips help, because otherwise when you go to turn it like this, it, the seam allowance would just be too much and it wouldn't you wouldn't get enough stretch to get around this curve and of course there's fuzz everywhere because it's minky and that's what minky does Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and sew that, and you want to be careful that um, these folds underneath here that naturally happen, you aren't sewing in a massive fold. So just be mindful of that as you're sewing. as I sew to avoid going over them with my needle. If the needle hits it, it can break the needle. It's happened to me a few times. I know some people who just sew right over them. My mom just sews right over them. But I'm a little bit afraid of needles in my eyes. So that's what we do. So that's one side of the penguin. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go in here and clip off this excess seam allowance. I feel like this just helps it lay nicer, especially in the curved areas. I don't always do this. You don't have to. It's just another little step that I think makes it look nicer. Although probably no one notices except me. So that's one side, and then I've already gone ahead and done this with the other side. So you'll just want to repeat that same process again. And moving on, I'm going to make the belly gusset. So for the belly gusset, you're going to want to take the white side and then the black top and line them up with right sides together and just sew them together. And then once again, you're going to want to pin them to the penguin. So I just pick a side, and the best place to start here is right where the color changes because this will make sure that that lines up nice. So we'll just put a pin there. And now I'm just going to go around and pin it in place. If you run into issues here, you can clip one side or the other, again, to help with the seam allowance. I tend to not have too many problems on this part, though. I don't know if you can hear them in the background. My birds are just eating. But they're eating particularly noisy. Sometimes I think all of the animals in this house know when I'm going to make a video and they just set out to be really annoying. One of the birds is on my shoulder because she wouldn't stop screaming when I was setting up. 
They know, guys. <laughs> Alright, so once that's pinned, you're just going to go ahead and sew it into place. Sometimes um, you, you might want to transition to a white thread here if you're really picky about the thread showing. But I feel like with Minky, it's actually the fluff kind of hides it, so it's not really a big deal. Once again, just clipping the excess seam allowance. And then you're going to take the top gusset and line it up. So with the top gusset, I like to start at the bottom, at the tail. I feel like this just gives it the best, um, don't know how to put that. It just works the best. <laughs> It's the most even when I go from here, I guess is what I will say. So we're just going to pin that in place. Oh, I didn't mention this. So you might want to clip this curve by the head because it is, again, a very extreme curve to go around. So it helps when you need to do this. <laughs> just one or two clips in that seam allowance there I find works really well. I must have done that earlier. Right, and then sew this on. Again, making sure I don't have any creases underneath the seam allowance. My gusset piece here is a little bit long, so I'm just going to clip that. Yours should fit up just perfect, but I traced this from a slightly earlier version of the pattern. Alright, so that gives you one whole side of your penguin. And once again, I'm going to go in and clip off this excess seam allowance. So now we're just going to put the other side on and sew all the way around. So it's just a lot of pinning to start. And again, I like to start right here on the belly where that color changes. This can be a difficult area when you get to about here because there's just so many seams coming in to meet at the same place. And so just go slowly over that area when you're sewing and pinning because it's kind of thick. So I like to sew the bottom, the bottom around this first uh, because it helps this tail area line up nicer without twisting. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that.
anything that says seam allowance. I feel like I just don't have a whole lot to say from this point on, but honestly, put, attaching the white and black parts of the the belly and the side there is the hardest part. After that, it's a pretty easy pattern. I think I've made a mistake here. I've sewn... It's accidentally folded the tail in and sewn up one of the pieces prop improperly. But um, I don't think it's a big deal. It will still work out. It will just have a little bit of a twisty tail. See? I make mistakes too, guys. <laughs> I will go in afterwards when the video is done and fix that. It's just a matter of using the seam ripper along that seam and then I'll just go in and fix it by hand. So then we're going to sew this top seam. So I'm just going to clip my excess seam allowance again. I'm going to, you're going to want to clip the edge of the tail there to get a nice um, pointed area when you turn it right side out. I'm going to skip that because I will go in afterwards, like I said, and fix that seam up better. Right, so the next step is going to be to attach the wings. You'll want to just cut along where you marked on the side of the body. And this is always tricky. I still kind of mess up on this sometimes. But you'll want the bottom part down and the black part up and the curve facing forward. So I'm just re I've reached through the hole with my hemostats and I'm going to grab on to this wing and pull it through. That opening in the face. And then you'll just line it up in there. This can be kind of fiddly. You can always do it sooner if you'd prefer. I just think that this is the easiest. And then you're going to sew as close to that as you can get. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and check. It's not quite sewn through on that side, so I'll just go over again. repeat that same step with the other side. So again, the black up, the white down, and the curve forward. step is going to do the eyes. So you're just going to make a little clip or you can use an owl, A-W-L. Uh, I've seen that a lot on different plush tutorials lately. I think it's a good idea because it just basically is a sharp pointy thing that just pokes through and stretches the hole rather than clipping it. Minky doesn't really fray, um, but material that does fray, that's a nice idea because then your eye is less likely to fall out. 
which can happen when the material stretches. So you're just going to insert your eye. Secure the washer on the back. I like to take wire cutters and clip it so the post is shorter. I feel like that just helps the eyes lay nicer once it's stuffed. But you don't need to do that. It's just a preference for me. Again, probably no one but me notices. I do think it helps it look nicer though. Then we're going to turn the penguin right side out. This can be a bit tricky just because it's such a small hole that we've left. my tail area it's gonna look a bit stubby um, because I need to go in and fix it and probably a little bit twisted but if you clipped the excess you won't have that same bunching in there like I do and then you're gonna go ahead and stuff your penguin and I am going to use my hemostats to do that My camera battery died there, but I am back and we are ready to stuff the penguin. So I like to use hemostats to stuff the penguin just because it's kind of a long shape in the body here and that helps pack it in. With all my plushies, you'll want to stuff somewhat firmly. It helps them hold their shape better. Plus, all plushies will kind of naturally deflate over time as they get like squished and played with and just settle in general. So if you stuff it firmly now, then you won't have a deformed plushie later down the line. I've seen some plushies that were stuffed very loosely end up just flat like pancakes. I'm kind of trying to pack it into the leg areas there and the tail of course. Which doesn't look too bad, even though I know that I messed it up a bit. So maybe I will leave it as is. Another stuffing tool is a stuffing fork, which just has two prongs here. And what you do to use the stuffing fork is you grab a little bunch like this, and you pinch it, and then you twist the stuffing fork. And it eventually makes like a Q-tip shape. This is not my favorite method for stuffing, so you'll just stuff it in there and then kind of pull it out. I don't like to do that because I think it makes lumps, but I do use a stuffing fork like this to kind of push the stuffing into place and pack it in where I want it. It's a good tool to add to your arsenal. You can also just take a chopstick and cut two little prongs in it. It'll work exactly the same way. I just prefer the durability of the metal stuffing fork. Alright, that looks pretty good. Make sure his face is nice and round. Alright, so now you just have kind of a, a horrified little looking penguin. <laughs> the next step is going to be to make the beak. So I've cut out two beak pieces here. Unlike the feet and the wings, I do go around 
with the seam allowance here because I want to be more exact. And then I've just drawn a line down the middle. This is just done with gel pen. People always ask how to mark on black. You can use a white gel pen or metallic sharpies work really well. Also, I have used um, like a chalk pencil. If that makes any sense, a uh, chalk marker will work, and so will like a white oil marker. Um, but I prefer the white gel pen. So I'm just going to top sew along that line. And that just creates the appearance of two halves of the beak there, upper and lower mandible. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that with the other beak. I'm going to make sure these are lined up here. And sew around. And then I'm just going to turn this right side out. And add just a little bit of stuffing. You don't want to stuff the beak too much. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more. On the side there. The next step is going to be to sew the beak onto the face. So I like to line it up so the seam is going from the top to the bottom and you just put it right over this hole. I'm using the ladder stitch which is you just go in the fabric immediately back out and come to the other side and repeat that in and immediately out. Call it the ladder stitch because it looks like the rungs of a ladder. Then you pull it tight and it will hide it. So I'm just going to go around the whole beak and do that twice. I feel like that just makes it a little bit more secure to go around twice. So just tied a couple knots in there, you stick the needle in, pull it out on some random spot, push in, clip as close as you can, and that hides the tail of your thread. And the final step is going to be to attach the feet. So I'm going to swap back over to the white thread. Oops. Accidentally tapped my pedal there. So fluffy. Alright, so the feet are going to go on the body right like that at an angle. So the best way I found to do this is to just use one hand to hold that there and the other to sew it in place again with the ladder stitch. We'll come around like this. So if you're not careful what can happen is the foot can do that. So we're just gonna again, you're gonna come up a little bit further than you'd think. 
And what that does is it's going to pull the foot right where it belongs. And I found that is the best way to make sure you get that nice positioning for the foot. And we're just going to repeat that process with the other foot. And again, I'm just going to go in a little bit further away from the seam. Let's pull that foot up. So once you've attached both of the feet, that completes your penguin. And after a good lint rolling, you'll have quite a cute little friend. Thanks for watching along, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.